The Jeffco School Board majority claims that they make decisions based on data and that Jeffco is failing because of low test scores. Jeffco parent Jim Early published his study of performance data in Jeffco on the Denver Post Your Hub website. He concluded that the level of school poverty is the most significant factor in test score results in Jeffco. Jim Early's conclusion is not limited to Jeffco. In fact, studies too numerous to count have shown the same result. Poverty is the single most significant predictor of school performance. This result has been demonstrated for K-12 schools throughout the United States, on national SAT tests, on tests in other countries, and on the international PISA tests. Studies have been conducted by academic researchers, policy institutes, news reporters, and ordinary citizens. They show that children in poverty do not lack ability, but children in poverty face many hurdles to achievement caused by economic disadvantages. Consequently, standardized test scores largely measure poverty levels of the children attending a school. One article asks a very important question. What do standardized tests tell us? What if standardized test scores aren't telling us what we think they are telling us? What if standardized test scores tell us less about in-school factors and more about out-of-school factors? In fact, this is exactly the case. Socioeconomic status is by far the strongest predictor of student performance on standardized tests. This graph compares demographic data for all of Colorado, Denver, Jeffco, Boulder, and Douglas County Public Schools. Denver is the poorest and largest district in Colorado, with 72% free and reduced lunch children. Colorado as a whole has 42% free and reduced lunch children. Douglas County is one of the richest districts in the nation, with only 12% free and reduced lunch children, followed closely by Boulder. Jeffco is between Denver and Douglas County with 33% free and reduced lunch children. The suburban schools have similar levels of ELL, GT, and special ed children. Consequently, the percentage of free and reduced lunch is the most significant demographic difference between districts. Performance data are the percentage of kids scoring proficient or advanced on state standardized tests. Here are the 2014 results for each district in reading. The graphs show the average reading scores for all kids, for GT kids, for free and reduced lunch kids, and special ed kids in each district. GT, free and reduced lunch, and special ed kids score on average significantly different than most kids. Consequently, the proportion of these populations in a school or district impacts the overall average score. Because the percentage of free and reduced lunch kids varies most widely between districts, the percentage of free and reduced lunch kids has the highest impact on the average score. As free and reduced lunch percentage goes down, scores go up. We see this trend in reading, writing, and math. Here are the average 2014 performance scores for each district in reading, writing, and math. In all cases, as free and reduced lunch percentage goes down, scores go up. Here is reading performance data for nearly 450 schools plotted with free and reduced lunch percentage levels in Jeffco, Dugco, Boulder, and Denver. Here, you can see in more detail the high correlation between free and reduced lunch levels and school performance. Note, each district has a few small schools devoted entirely to severe at-risk or special education children. These schools are not used in the data analysis. All data used in our analyses are publicly available on the Colorado Department of Education website. You can view, download, and compare the data on the CDE website for yourself.